Welcome back to Opinion Journal Live. Well, taking time from its busy schedule, the Obama administration recently decided to take sides, the side of Florida tomato growers in a trade dispute over tomatoes with Mexico. Uh, joining me to talk about this is editorial board member Mary Kissel. Welcome, Mary. Thanks for having me, Dan. Mary, the last time I checked, Florida was an important swing state in the presidential election. Is, can we see it as simply coincidence that uh, they've lodged this trade complaint against Mexican tomato growers? Or can you draw a direct line from the Commerce Department protecting a few big, important, politically important families in Florida? I think you can draw a line here, um, Dan. Uh, this is trade in tomatoes, but uh, more broadly speaking, trade in perishable goods, something like tomatoes or bananas or something like that, um, is, is tough for importers because if the good uh, goes bad, well, you, you have to sell it to make something, so you put it on a discount. Well, there were all sorts of dumping wars in the 80s, 70s and 80s between the U.S. and Mexico with tomatoes, so we put a price floor on it. Uh, and that gave certainty to the industry, to importers, to domestic growers. Everybody liked it. It worked. Commerce said three times, this is great. Now, all of a sudden, at the behest of mainly these Florida families, but also other growers, Commerce is saying, no, 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 let's get rid of this and let's have the dumping wars again. Yeah, well, exactly right, Mary. I mean, the question is, why would it come up now and come up in this way? I mean, lots of us who buy fresh vegetables like to look at the labels and say, where is this stuff coming from? And we know that for years and years, tomatoes have been coming from Mexico. Now, this is the sort of dispute you would think could be worked out quietly behind the scenes between the American government and the Mexican government. but. The and they wanted to, and yeah. they tried to. So these growers came to Commerce in June and petitioned Commerce and said, look, we want to get rid of this agreement because once we do that, we can file an anti-dumping uh, suit, which again would bring volatility to the marketplace, which would bring higher prices for U.S. consumers, for restaurants, for your tomato sauce, uh, for, for Walmart and grocery stores. Yeah. Um, and the Mexicans said, no, let's negotiate. We'll renegotiate the price floor on this. We'll up enforcement on our side of the border. And by the way, we'll get more of our growers to sign on to this pact. They had 85%. They said, we'll get more than 85%. And Commerce basically said, nah, no, we don't really want no, to talk Mary, to this you. falls uh, hot on the heels of a similar WTO action that the uh, Obama administration took against China for uh, on subsidizing auto parts and cars. Uh, that, we assume, had to do with the uh, auto workers working around the Great Lakes states. Yeah, again, another straight line between a trade action and a political event, in this case, an election. Uh, you know, you, you, I can't really fault our trade partners. And by the way, Mexico is one of our biggest trade partners, number two and three in imports and exports for us, like China. So they're very important. You can't fault them for starting to believe that trade for us is not free and fair, that it is something that revolves around election cycles. And, you know, Dan, and that in turn degrades an institution like, for example, the WTO, which was set up to well, arbitrate disputes. Right. Now, now, speaking of the WTO, Mary, over the weekend, they issued a, a really interesting report. I mean, we've had people follow these issues, can see that economies around the world are kind of in a state of decline. The WTO said it expects trade to decline to, to only rise by 2.5% this year. In 2010, it rose by over 14%. That's a pretty significant fall off in trade activity. And if you get into a situation like this where China, Mexico are at loggerheads with us and their own industries are being hurt by the generalized decline in economic activity, they start to get, tend to get protectionist and there could be some crackbacks over uh, these policies, which is not going to help uh, global economic activity, I don't think. Well, I don't think I could put it any better myself, Dan. Um, it, that's exactly right. You've summarized it perfectly. And the problem is that in this cyclical downturn, there would be a natural fall off in trade. This is exactly the time when you need more free trade agreements, when you need to shore up the legitimacy uh, of the, something like the WTO, which is there to arbitrate disputes and instead what do we have we have just the opposite we have an administration bringing suits in politically important swing states and not doing anything at all to advance in a significant way uh, free trade in the rest of the world you know just very quickly back to the tomato wars who exactly does this affect in florida i mean florida isn't full of mom and pop 
small family farms growing tomatoes, I don't believe. These would be pretty large producers. It's basically four or five major families in Florida. We didn't name them in the editorial today, but they're pretty easy to look up. The Damari family is one of them. Um, but ultimately, the people who will pay for this policy are U.S. consumers. The next time they go into Walmart to buy a tomato or they go to Subway to get a hoagie, they can thank the Obama administration's Commerce Department for upping that price for them. All right. Thanks so much, Mary.